Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome to my latest video. Well, this one, I'm going to do a review of a HD video capture card. This particular one is from a company called UCEC. Not sure exactly what that acronym stands for, but they are based, uh, or at least have a f facility here in the United States that they distribute from. And they sent me this capture card for review for free, full disclosure. I am not getting any other money from them at all in terms of reviewing this. I like to review products, especially technology products, so I said I would do it. But it'll be an honest review, completely independent, as it always is for me. So let's take a look at this a little bit more carefully. I'm going to do a box opening first, and we'll see what's in it. From what I read online, it has a couple of things that I wouldn't have normally expect it to come in with a device. Now this one is a little more expensive than the previous ones that I did. So the, the previous one was probably cost about $50 and the one before that was about $25. I think that's the case. I may put a chart at the end of this video showing the difference in the pricing between the various ones that I've reviewed. Definitely will be a comparison of this against those devices in terms of its performance. Let's see if it does go uh, 60p, because that's what it says here. It goes 1080p 60. That's also why this video is being created in 1080p 60 rather than my normal 4K, so that when I do the testing, you'll be able to see for yourself exactly how it appears on the video, and there'll be no misunderstanding about that. So with that, let me go ahead now and readjust the cameras and open this box up. Okay, here it is the box. Let me turn it over. One thing I do want to say is I wish packaging was a little simpler. There's an awful lot here. It's, uh, it's just something I'm not used to with the later pieces of equipment that I reviewed. I think simpler is actually better. Point of interest makes no technical issue to it, but if I were going to market this, I'd probably, at least in the United States, I'd mark, make the box a little simpler. get a tear out of it. <laughs> a couple of tears. So we've got the uh, USB 3.0. They're very clear about that, so they want to make sure everybody understands that, which means if you do see a blue connector here, and we'll test it to see if it actually has a throughput capable of 3.0, it has an actual mic connector to it. And then over here, it has the input and the output for the HDMI. This is nice because you get to pass it on to another monitor or some other device that you may want to record what's going on through the HDMI. That way you don't dedicate the HDMI cable to this. That's a good handy feature. It's nice and glossy, not very heavy. Let me get a scale and, and see what it looks like. Got a regular postal scale here. Let's turn this guy on. See what we got. Is it set for ounces? Let's put this on here, see what we got. So it's two ounces. That's what it uh, comes out to, two ounces. We want to put it in, see what it looks like in grams. A total of 56 grams. Okay. Let's see what else there is in the box here. Oh, really nice foam, really dense, solid firm foam. So this thing definitely will be protected when it's shipping in this box. You see how the bottom is? Nice and simple. I like that. Turn this over. What do we got here? We got a user manual. I'll take a look at this when I set it up. And then let's see what cables, looks like some cables came with it. So I've got a USB 3.0 uh, cable. Oh, about two feet. So a two foot USB cable. And it's got an HDMI cable. Oh, and it's got an adapter that goes from USB type A to USB type C. Still 3.0, it won't be the 3.2, that's okay. But it comes with a free adapter. We could put that on here if we wanted to, like such. That's good. Let's see this uh, HDMI cable. This is a little bit of a surprise. I, normally these things don't come with an HD unless it's connected to it already, like the first device I, I had, which had an HDMI pigtail on it. Actually, that wasn't an HDMI, HDMI pigtail. That one had the USB pigtail. So this is the first one that has, again, about two feet, it looks like to me. And that's what's in the box. No power, so I guess the, uh, the power is going to get drawn from, probably from the USB. So there is no power adapter, no, no capability of even connecting a power adapter to it. But it does have the capability of doing a microphone. That's unusual. I've never seen one of those like that before. 
Okay, so let's hook it up and see what it looks like connected to the computer. Okay, here's the UCEC video capture card hooked up. I'm using the 3.0 cable that it came with to connect to the PC. And I have the input coming in from this camera. And I have the output going directly to my Elgato 4K60 device. So I'm feeding it through as is. And I'll do the test with it configured as such. As you can see, if you follow the cord over, it's connected up to one of my USB 3.0. Okay, what I have on the screen now is a picture of my OBS set up with the Elgato in the upper left-hand corner here and also the UCEC USB 3.0 output in the lower left-hand corner. And this third one is my capture of my third screen from my three screen setup for my computer. Just wanted to show this layout, plus I wanted to show the log files from this. So if I go to the log files and look at view current log, this is the current log of it. Now, if you look carefully at it, the first device I connected was at the top here, the UCEC, and it shows that it came in at 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. And also right below that, you see the 4K60, the Elgato, and of course that came in appropriately as well as 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. So the FPS is exactly the same. And if I go ahead now and um, show some movement on the screen, we can actually you know, step through it frame by frame. Okay, let me step through this frame by frame and see how it looks. You'll actually see down in the bottom center, the frame count goes up. Currently we're at seven minutes, 25 seconds and 20 frames in. And now we'll step through frame by frame. 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. I'll put the frame count up on the screen. And as you can see, they're both moving together. So they're both at 60 frames per second because that's what I have it actually showing this screen at 60 frames per second. There is no delay between the two. That is a really good thing to notice. And I'll do the further testing after this to actually show what the propagation delay is. Okay, one last thing I'd like to cover here, as long as I'm in OBS, is how the sound works with this. So if you actually go to the OBS sound, you see there is sound coming out of the UCEC device from my camera. The same thing I'm actually speaking right now. But you have to be aware, you have to make sure you set a checkbox on these devices. I mentioned this in one of my comments. So if you go into properties here, and you go into the sound properties, there's a little checkbox here called use custom audio device. If I were to turn that off, then we'd lose the sound. As you can notice down here, the UCEC device. And that was the default, by the way, when I first installed it. In order to see the sound from it, you got to click on this little box in order to see the sound coming out of it, like it is now. So I just wanted to show that as well. Okay, now let me test what I call the propagation delay. Let me clear the previous settings. I have the millisecond clock, digital clock, on the camera right now, and it's being displayed on the two outputs from this UCEC. One is directly through the HDMI out, and the other one is through its USB out. So let me go ahead and start this and see what we got. And then I'll do a capture. And now this is what will display as a result of that capture. And you can see the propagation delay between them. There's really no difference between the Elgato 4K60, the upper left-hand corner, and the, also the output coming out of the USB. Finally, I have the camera sound turned off right now, but I have the microphone moved to the UCEC video capture device. So let's see how this sounds when uh, I play back through here. Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. On this channel you'll find a variety of different types of videos. I focus mostly on computer technology and other technologies that somewhat depend on computer technology, but I also do other things. And then finally I show the results of some comparison testing 
based upon what I tested in this particular video, but also in previous videos. In the first one, I talk about the maximum output resolution. I'm covering both the vertical and horizontal resolution, and I'm also showing the frames per second of each device. In the second slide, I am showing the propagation delay. That is the delay that's a derivative of the latency, but it's not directly applicable in some cases. But it does give you an idea of what the delay would be. You know, say you were trying to find out if fingers were moving like I did in this example. In the third slide, I show the price comparison between the four devices. And you can see what the price per performance happens to be. As you can see, this device is towards the higher end, but nowhere near as high as the Elgato Cam Link, which I substituted in place of the Elgato 4K60, which I actually used in this video. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how it fits in with the other devices. Well, that concludes this video review, testing, comparison of this UCEC video capture device. It did extremely well. I was surprised by it, actually. It's, in terms of the propagation delay, there was actually no difference between what I have from this device through USB and my Elgato 4K60 going directly in PCIe. So that, that surprised me. The only thing that I had trouble with this was I tried using that little sound connected it gave for putting another ex external mic on it and using the mic from this camera both with the amplifier on and the amplifier off I couldn't get the sound to come through at any real good volume so I'm not exactly sure with that I'm going to continue testing it with some other mics that I have there are some that are different types maybe one of them will work better and if they do, I'll put a pinned comment down on the bottom of this video indicating that if I have any different results with another mic. It also worked, as you saw, going right through my Raspberry Pi. I was able to actually play a video and you could hear the sound clearly and it was perfect. So going through HDMI, there was no problem. Also going from HDMI to HDMI, connecting the in and the out, there was a, I couldn't detect any sort of propagation delay between those two. Just remember what I said in a previous video, the propagation delay is not really the latency, but it can be converted to latency because the propagation delay includes all of the delays that the system itself imposes, some with the hardware, some with the BIOS a little bit, definitely some with the operating system, and then finally with the application that you happen to be running. But other than that, it did extremely well. Is it worth the $80? That's up to you. It's still cheaper than buying the equivalent uh, Elgato uh, 4K version of this. However, this one does not go 4K. That is the one limitation to it. So with all that in mind, hopefully I've covered all the things you're interested in. If there's something you think I forgot, put a note down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. Well, until the next time, thanks for watching and take care.